Request Mr. Ethinder to please promote Sandeep Jumanji as a co panelist. Thank you, Shiva man. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Can you allow screen sharing, please? You will be now having, sir, because you are the co-panelist. Host has disabled participant screen sharing. I joined as panelist only. Uh, yeah, now it will not, it will be happening for you, sir. Now we are the panelists. You can do screen sharing. No, not yet. No, host disabled screen sharing itself. One second, sir. Let me check. Now I can see it. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thanks, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. For those who have joined early, thank you very much. We appreciate your participation and your uh, punctuality for this event.
Uh, good morning, Vinod sir. Uh, request you to accept the invitation to be a panelist. Otherwise, you will not be able to share your screen, sir. I'm giving you the option. Yeah, thank you, sir. Am I, am I audible, ma'am? You're very feeble, sir. You're audible, but uh, sound is very feeble. How is it now? A little better, not very good. Yeah, now? Now is it okay? Yes, good, sir. Thank you. So we'll just wait for some more time. Even though the time is 11, I can see the number of participants have joined is very less. Yeah, we, have, yeah. we have huge number of registrations. So yeah. maybe another two, three minutes, we'll start. And Mr. Sandeep Jumanji uh, will be doing the introduction yeah. of you. He's from the Sindhi community, um, Coimbatore, Sindhi Forum Coimbatore, sorry. Okay. Right. Good morning, sir. Morning, morning, morning. Good morning to everybody who's joined. We'll be starting shortly. Shiva, ma'am, I'll go ahead with the introduction and we'll get started. Sure, sir. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining today's second part of our uh, cyber session organized uh, by Sindhi Forum Coimbatore in association with Information Sharing and Analysis Center. Uh, today's focus topic is going to be securing your Aadhaar and PAN. And our guest speaker is our very respected Colonel Binoj Joshi. Sorry, Binoj Koshi. Uh, he's serving on deputation to the government of India as a director in technology at UIDAI that manages and administers Aadhaar. Like I mentioned, uh, Colonel Binoj Koshi is an active officer of the Indian Army, presently at, on deputation uh, to the government of India. He has also served in both operational and peacetime activities in the service of our nation. He is a war wounded soldier with injuries sustained during military operations in Jammu and Kashmir. He's a national cybersecurity scholar, a cybersecurity expert and evangelist. We are honored to have you amongst us today, sir, and we look forward to your guidance in today's session. I will now hand control over to Colonel Binoj to take us through today's proceedings. 
Over to you, sir. Yeah. Uh, can I share the screen then? Yes, sir. For all the participants, you should have an option of Q&A in Zoom. If you have any questions, please feel free to add your questions into the Q&A and we will take appropriate pauses to go through your questions and answer them. Is the screen visible, please? Uh, yes, sir, it is. Yeah, okay. Uh, welcome participants and uh, it's a pleasure to address all of you. And I have also been part of the cohort travel journey and part of ISEC. Uh, I'm Colonel Binoj. Sorry Kaur. to interrupt you, sir. Can you speak a little louder? Okay. Yeah, you can interrupt me whenever. Is, is it okay now? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, apologies for the audio because I think I'm using uh, uh, the wired mic. Probably that could be the reason. Yeah, okay. Uh, irrespective. Uh, welcome to the participants and uh, it is a great opportunity for me to address such a huge gathering uh, one of the elite people among the community here. Uh, I'm here to talk about the Aadhaar. Primarily, I will concentrate how to, how to protect oneself because everybody has got an Aadhaar. Yet, uh, <clears throat> uh, the fact that there is so much of fraud and vulnerabilities around Aadhaar it is an essential fact that we all should be aware of the security aspects that Aadhaar offers and also what one can do to ensure that the security is maintained on the Aadhaar. Of course, it is an inevitable identity and you know that when Aadhaar actually as a project started, there were more than uh, 1.3 billion people that time wanting to enroll itself. And there was the National Population Register or the National Census that was also concurrently launched. However, the success of Aadhaar primarily ensured that we could achieve this milestone of mapping about 90, 95% of Indian population. Um, yet there are gaps in population where people do not have Aadhaar. We will come to that a little later. Just a minute. Yeah. Okay. Is the screen visible now? Yes, sir, it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. This is the vision of the UIDI to empower residents of India with a unique identity and a digital platform to authenticate any 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 time and anywhere. That was the now primarily the Aadhaar consists of the demographic and the biometric data. It has nothing to do with caste, creed, community. Yet the four demographic mandatory requirements to generate an Aadhaar is the name, the address, the gender, and the date of birth. Subsequent to that comes the biometric data, that is the two irises that one holds, and ten fingers. Now the question would be, how is there an exception, somebody who is blind? There are provisions of exceptions. Yet the approval is quite difficult. So it takes a little time for a, for a Divyang on these terms to get an Aadhaar. However, there are scopes and provisions for them. One can even get a home enrollment done for, for those type of categories. Yeah. Now the 10 fingers and the iris. Of course, the photograph does exist. The photograph does not fall part of the core biometrics. Yet it is, it is a semi-biometric or, or a non-core biometric in the database. Now, when the project started, <clears throat> there, were, there were no requirements of any sort of a documentation. Yet, by virtue of the 10 finger and the iris that one supplies, 
the duplicacy is checked from the database and then is this 12 digit number allocated now this number has nothing to do with the profile or the person of the person sex uh, the is a correction the gender the date of birth the name so in the database, we had earlier allowed that you can change your name umpty number of times, one could change your address, one could change even the gender, one could change the date of birth. But the very fact that the uniqueness of that 12 digit number associated with the biometrics of that person make this one of the world's best platforms of identity. Hence, it was the most successful project in the country in terms of digitization or e-enabling of citizen that an identity could be provided to that person. So even today, if you just can memorize your Aadhaar number and then use your biometrics that is with you, your iris or your fingerprint, you can authenticate any services that the government of India runs. Now, let me put you into perspective in terms of a new Aadhaar that is to be generated. If, if today I have got about 1.4 billion records in my database, if today I were to enroll a person, let's say Mr. Bhup Singh, if Mr. Bhup Singh were to supply his biometrics, that is his iris and finger, it goes back into the database, it verifies whether this pattern exists within the database or not. And it is not done by one service agency, it is done by minimum of two service agencies who sit back in the data center and then when an uniqueness is found only then the Aadhaar is generated. Now just because it, the percolation of Aadhaar became so huge that in the halfway through we came up what is known as the virtual ID. So a 16 digit virtual let's say one does not want to disclose the 12 digit number you have a provision of generating a 16 digit virtual ID which is temporary and revocable. Let's say you, are, you want to issue a Airtel SIM. One can generate a virtual ID. So we hold back this as a tokenized ID of that particular 12-digit Aadhaar number of Mr. Boop Singh. And subsequent to that, what we do is we have the provision or the resident has the provision to revoke back or he can cancel that virtual ID and generate a new virtual ID after he has obtained the Airtel SIM. You know, you can use another one. Yet, the, the same has been extended for EKYCs also, which was recently done. So, if you have a virtual ID, you can use that for your EKYC in your banks and many of the other services where EKYC is required, like for a kid's children's scholarship and things like that. Okay. So, that means it is presumed May, may I ask a clarifying question, sir? Because many of us um, are not well versed with some of the technical terms uh, mm. that are used. Mm. When you say a virtual identity, right? Well, VID is a virtual identity uh, identifier. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned it's a 16 digit number. So are you saying that, let's say, if my child's school says that you must provide your uh, child's Aadhaar number so that we can register your child against XYZ services that the government of India or the government of Tamil Nadu, which is where we reside. Yeah. Uh, we can register your child for such a service or register your child's identity. Then in such an instance, um, should we be telling them, hold on, I'll give you a virtual ID. I don't want to give you the 12 digit Aadhaar. Yeah, you can do that. But there is a hitch to this. There's a caveat to this. Now, that 16-digit identity is actually mapped to your 12-digit number and your biometrics. Mm -hmm. And, of course, whatever demographic you're supplied to. Now, what happens here is that if, let us say, you you obscure this or you delete this 16-digit or you generate a, a fresh 16-digit number for some other service, then that 16-digit which you gave is only useful for that period of time where you did not generate a new virtual ID. Now, oh, okay. the harm here is that if you want to use multiple virtual ID, but yet, if let us say the school says, no, we want to authenticate this child from my database, from the UIDI database. So as soon as you give this 16 digit number, the, the school can use this 16 digit to authenticate whether that is Shraddha, age 22 or age 15, gender mm -hmm. being female 
address of the parent being so and so and that's all and after that it it doesn't want to use the virtual id it can mm. still do like that so if it is for an instance then the vid comes handy but if you want to give this as a permanent number then the other number is a better yeah. choice Yes. Got yes. it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you for clarifying that, sir. So, yeah. just to summarize, if it's a it's an agency where I need my information to be there for a long time, then I would verify and give them my Aadhaar. If it's for just verifying who I am, so I can gain a service or an e KYC, then I generate a VID, and each time I generate a new VID, all past VIDs become invalid. True. Correct. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Okay, going moving forward. Now, what is the difference between the Aadhaar that we have and the other identity cards like PAN cards, voter ID cards, and health ID? Now we have the Abha ID card. Now, the difference is that we capture biometrics concurrently alongside the demographic data. now the biometrics is authenticatable i'll tell you a simple example today if you go to uttar pradesh the public distribution system or the ration supply which is given happens on an aadhar authentication so the household lady wife goes to the public distribution uh, kendra where the rations are issued the lady supplies her iris and collects her rations and goes away now by that the government of india is achieving a huge amount of benefit one is that this lady cannot come back till a month has elapsed number one number two this lady's ration has reached the correct person number three there is no middleman involved in this whole aspect number four is the fact that there has no more ghost beneficiaries used to take this ration so that way just because of that power of aadhar it has been used across umpty number of channels for example i'll give you my own example in the old regime of lpg gas cylinder the cooking gas cylinder i had about three gas connections in my name one was binoj koshi then was koshi binoj and then i had b koshi so and one i used to keep it with me one one with my wife who was in the separated family quarters one at my parents house when the aadhar got linked to the lpg connection because remember there was no direct benefit transfer those days so the subsidy was attached to the billing invoice price of the cylinder jahan 80 rupees mein ya 90 rupees mein cylinder aata tha now what happened is when the aadhar got linked with the lpg connections but we found out that large number of people were deduplicated out from that complete project and so what happened is about 5000 crores was paid back to the government of india when aadhar linkage became mandatory to the lpg so in that form there is no other identity probably in the world that is as robust or as good as this and mind you there are hitches for a 1.4 billion people in this country that a project like this has to find its way really through you know uh, rocky grounds and hard water yeah okay leaving aside now there are two types of machines that we use to take the enrollment now remember there are few very few aadhar seva kendras that are run by uidi or the aadhar itself most of them are on on enrollment basis or selection basis for example all the post offices in india are authorized to do aadhar updation and enrollment all most of the banks are also authorized to do now there is something called an ecmb client or the enrollment client managing machine that is there and then we have the tab why we have the tab i'll come to it a little later so this is the en enrollment and update schema in the country so in the country we've got around 4 lakh odd nodes completely in the country where all this activities can be done so one has to be very careful when you go to such centers whether it is whether he is an aadhar authorized operator or not we've got a scheme of onboarding and offboarding these operators we have a very stringent form of corruption so even if you report a small form of correction that person is offboarded out 
and remember when an updation or an enrollment is done by a resident of india we also pay them we also commensurate to uh, uh, financial assistance to the operators so it is not that what he is collecting from you is the only money that government of india spends it spends almost three times what probably one would be paying otherwise enrollment is free for the first time um, biometrics uh, of a child after 5 years is free biometric of a child after say, 18 years is also free yeah on enrollment and uh, of course update yeah let's see the journey of aadhar everybody is aware so i just thought i'll flash a view file for this this is the journey that has been to the other we've got a saturation of about 93% as of today uh the marginalized people are those of the northeast and jammu and kashmir who have not come on board due to other reasons yet uh, all of about 93% of the indian population are sat okay aadhar is not a proof of residentship uh, citizenship hence we call this a resident proof now i'll dwell on who's authorized to get an aadhar in the next slide but this is has been the journey of aadhar and if you remember in 2016 uh, the one of the largest heard cases in the supreme court of india and in independent india has been the privacy surrounded around aadhar and the aadhar act was amended by the supreme court judgment in 2018 we had to revise the aadhar act of 2016 and today privacy is well ensured into the thing in terms of privacy let's say there's a theft at coimbatore and the police guy finds about 10 fingerprints on a locker and he brings those to me to identify the rest, the people who have actually put that finger first of all aadhar will not do it because there are and even if it is possible it cannot be done because of the supreme court's mandate that privacy or the the owner of the biometric is the resident himself secondly once the biometric goes into the aadhar system there is no way of retrieving it out it is only a yes or a no that comes out we'll explain i'll explain to you the other aspect of this later yeah okay this is the april statistics i thought i'll just flash it out and by uh, aadhar enabled payment system is the aadhar bridge aadhar enabled bridge banking application wherein you would have seen advertisements on your local television or on the national television where a person a postman comes up to you and give he supplies his thumb and we know which account it is related to he just has to remember the aadhar number his aadhar number and the thumb and he puts the thumb to the aadhar enabled payment system the postman will give him he's got a, he carries a small pos machine and the money is given to him like how we used to collect money orders we can use aadhar enabled to transfer account from one to another by just knowing the aadhar number of the the person and the person who is giving the money need to press his uh, do his biometric authentication so the money will go out and e kyc you are aware that most of us in the banks we go to our kyc this is what we have been doing all through and uh, for authentication as i told you 1.96 billion com- authentications we have been doing all through okay aadhar is one of the most uni- unique ids that is there and it is acceptable as an authentication now for this the aadhar usage agency whoever wants to use an aadhar has to get a government of india notification under the aadhar act provisions of section 7 and section 4 of the act uh, after that is provided so we provide a license key to them and then they have a secure connection back to the database now let us say uh, you are you are going uh, a child is going for a midday meal the child places the finger once the finger is placed it punches the sorry it punches first the aadhar number and then provides the finger on that machine on that uh, machine so it goes back into the database we in the meantime we pick up the frame and keep it ready because the aadhar number has been supplied to us so we know who is whose number has come to us and then when you supply your thumb this travels these two frames are tallied inside the secure database and a yes or a no packet is only given a zero or a one comes out from the biometric database so in that way there is no way there is a data diode attached 
So nothing can come out. No biometrics can come out from the database of UID. Only the yes or a no packet will come. So you need to give your Aadhaar number first, and then provide the biometrics. So the physical copy need not be submitted. Actually, there are many places where they ask you. Like for example, these hotels generally in the south, they say Aadhaar number they do because they know that you can create any other identity. With different names and different same different father name and things like that, but the Aadhaar number being unique, if you want to authenticate that person, then it becomes much much easier to do it because that number is unique to that person. So hence the uniqueness and the uh, deduplication is possible. That is why uh, it has become very significant. For most basic transaction, you can use a copy of our voter ID card, ration card, and all that. But Aadhaar generally you should avoid. But let's say if they still insist, you may give a copy of your Aadhaar, but just scratch away or mask away the first eight digits and just give the last four digits. That is more than enough. Or generate a VID, virtual ID, uh, Aadhaar, and then you can. From our website. From our portal services, you can also generate a masked Aadhaar that will again automatically cut the eight digits and only give you the last four digits. You can do that also. Now, there's a there's a very good service that you should all avail. But I would suggest not to provide the Aadhaar number. We don't know what all it is going to be linked to in the subsequent years to come. So it is better not to populate the database of the black dark web with. All the Aadhaar number. So we also uh, educate our residents not to provide the Aadhaar copy unless it is dire essential or you are giving it to a government agency. Yeah. Okay. Now this is the general layout. We have the unique identity authority of India. Most of you would remember uh, our uh, uh, techno politician. Dr. Nandan Nelkhani, who started this project, uh, the first Aadhaar was issued in September 2010. To a, to a, is there available on Google? So you can see that the structure is primarily we've got eight regional offices. I'll show you the mapping of these regional offices and the and presently the government has gone a little aggressive. We are going. We are establishing state offices also. So a small. Satellite office of the regional offices under the same regional office is being opened. Now we've got two data centers: one at Hebal, that is Bangalore, and the other one at Manisa. These two are highly secure, protected by CISF. It is part of the national critical infrastructure and under the government of India's most protected zone, as if like a nuclear nuclear installation site. So. It's well protected, and all your data of 1.4 billion people lie there. And remember, what you have supplied to the Aadhaar even a few years back is also lying there as a packet, so that is not destroyed. Another aspect to this is that because the deduplication is is done for the complete for from the complete database, when a new person comes to enroll, we do not delete the dead man dead person's data also. So, if a new enrollment comes in, we tally that biometric attribute with even the people who are dead, and so we don't keep a record of dead or alive. So that is how our data is organized. Now, just to add to whatever I was telling you earlier, this is the mapping of the regional. So, whenever you have a issue with regard to a particular state, and these mapping are primarily based on the address, the pin code that you have supplied to us in the Aadhaar. So if you shift, let's say from Coimbatore, let's say you go back to Rajasthan, that the final pin code is taken as that particular region where this Aadhaar subscriber is mapped to. Mind you, you may have you know, you have a DOB change which is exception handling, all that you can go to these particular offices that is mentioned here. Yeah, any questions from anybody? None so far, sir. I'm monitoring the Q and A section. I think people are very eager to look at you know the how to protect their uh, other we'll information. We'll yeah, we'll come to it. We'll come to it. Okay. Now, who is 
who's authorized an aadhar any individual in india is respect of age gender uh, okay, uh, another part is that aadhar is one when it conceptualized we started the third gender also in this there are few identity cards in india which carry the third gender option so you've got that all nris are authorized a aadhar all those ocis or people of foreign origin who stay in india for 182 days in the preceding 12 months are also authorized an aadhar so we have a rohing a bangladeshi carrying an aadhar so don't be surprised it is so sir can i ask a clarifying question here so yeah. um let's say um in in this instance let's say a person has moved back to india they were legally working in a country like usa and one child was born in the usa and they're a citizen of usa mm -hmm. uh, and now for the last many years their child is studying here in india are they eligible for aadhar if the child who has come back or who has been got back to india can prove a stay of 182 days by virtue of mm -hmm. visa stamping or an okay. frro certificate or okay. for that matter if you can show a, a ltv a long term visa then we'll consider mm. this as a 182 days and we will issue the aadhar got it so now okay we, we can get into more technicalities later uh, i have a fraud related question from one of our uh, uh, participants but i think once you get into protecting aadhar i will bring that question up yeah 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 thank you i hope my audio is clear yes sir it is yeah yeah okay right so this is the saturation map of the heat map of india in which the saturation you would see the northeast is a little too low kashmir of course uh, we have taken the population in full uh, uh, but then the percolation is very low in terms of uh, ladakh uh, and all is concerned j and k jammu and kashmir jammu and kashmir both are on boarded well now at least you would see that they are well uh, well within the subscription limit of over 90% now as i speak to you yeah okay now this is the age group as to why i have distinguished this age group wise i'll tell you but if you see the overall saturation we say is 99% 35 for 0 to 5 years of age and 5 to 18 years of age is about 98% and above 18 years of age is 106% okay now why i have distinguished this a child is also authorized an aadhar but in the case of a child we capture the biometric and the attribute aadhar attributes of the parent and also we capture the demographic data so those can come the address can come in from the parents aadhar by virtue of huf hindu united family concept which is there in the aadhar act and uh, the uh, the gender and date of birth of course is coming from the birth certificate now if one has enrolled has obtained a birth certificate from the municipal authority using the registrar of birth and death then you just have to give your child registration number or the crnr crn number the api will automatically go and pick up the other credentials when you generate an aadhar so this is a new addition after 1st of october after the uh, registrar of birth and death bill that has come in now that the birth birth registration bill so all the uh, registrar of birth and deaths have got an api now so we connect to that api pick up the birth certificate data if you can give us the birth, child registration number of the birth Uh, from the birth certificate that's more than enough we can enroll a child now the child does not provide the biometric because aadhar feels that the biometrics is not fully developed both at the eyes as well as at the mm, finger the 10 fingers subsequent to that we have a 18 year re-enrollment so uh, uh, correction uh, after 5 years the child has to come up for a biometric update so up to 2 years we give them a buffer it is free but after 7 years if you come we'll ask we'll ask you to pay a 100 rupee additional so this is it otherwise 0 to 5 is free 
And of course, if you do a mandatory biometric update after five, that is also free for enroll for, for updation of the biometrics after five years of age. Now, coming back to the 18 years, this new addition came in after the Supreme Court's verdict, which says that Aadhaar is based on consent. So at the 18 years, we presume that the child becomes an adult as per the Aadhaar Act. Of course, as per the Juvenile Justice Act, it is 16. But we consider it as a, up to 16 to 18 also. We have now made a relaxation that one can go and update their uh, biometrics uh, and uh, refresh the biometrics after 18 years of age. Now, beyond 18 years of age, you see the saturation is 106%. The reason is that, as I told you, the dead man data also is lying there. So you would see more than 100% in the data. Of course, we are agnostic or we don't know who's dead or who's alive, but we know that the Aadhaar is there and we don't destroy the Aadhaar number. Primarily for the fact that we need to deduplicate the uh, a new enrolling agent, the new enrolling person. Okay. In so far as the Aadhaar ecosystem is concerned, these are the five primary ecosystems. We have an enrollment and update, as I already told you. Just because of the, the penetration of Aadhaar into the Indian population, authentication has become a big service. If you go to obtain your driving license, he tells you bring your Aadhaar. Because he's going to authenticate you by virtue of it. Like we as 4Gs, we used to have about four to five uh, uh, um, driving licenses across the country. All that is gone because the uh, Ministry of Transport authenticates a driving license provider. Or uh, If you're not caught as yet, probably when you go for your next renewal, you will be caught. Because the Ministry of Transport has also now linked to the Aadhaar. Uh, so I can deduplicate. Actually, it is a crime to hold more than one driving license in India. Yeah, okay. Now is the logistic part. It is very huge. As I told you, every day there is a dispatch of more than 6 lakh Aadhaar cards. Aadhaar, that letter, which is there. Then there is a PVC card service. About 15,000 cards are printed every day. Then, of course, uh, other than that, there are huge amount of printing services that happen. Uh, all this is managed by the logistic division, which is there. We have a logistic setup. Then comes the testing and the training. There are a large number of operators who get onboarded, offboarded, operators being certified. NSCIT is our partner. So we have an examination for these enrollment clerks uh, who pass the test and then they are then taken into the database. Then, of course, as, a, as you are all aware, CRM is now a very customer relation management is a very big component of UIDI because we have large number of calls you know that we have got a helpline number called 1947, that is 1947, the year of independence has been given to Ada, so you would understand how much is the calls that come in there. Uh, a large amount of about 4 to 5 lakh calls come in per day, and we have emails coming in. All this is managed by the CRM domain. So just a quick question. So 1947 is a dedicated Aadhaar helpline? Yeah, correct. Across India? Yeah. And then help at the rate uidi.net.in, uh, .gov.in. Help at the rate uidi.gov.in. This is the email ID again. Got it. Thank you. you very much. Put it into the chat, probably. Yeah. 1947 is there. Then, of course, if you have an MRR app, we have a chatbot also running right alongside. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that is it. Can I go ahead? Yes, please, sir. Yeah. Okay. I was just mentioning about the benefits that has been accrued because of Aadhaar. This is just a view file to show the amount of benefit uh, that has gone through the DBT. That is the direct benefit transfer. Now, you know, all these payments are being done through uh, bank transactions. Now, for example, Mandrega, which is there, the Narega project. If a laborer goes and works and cleans the roadside, he cleans the Nala. And then he's authorized a particular payment. So he just has to supply his Aadhaar number and place his finger. So his attendance is also done and the money directly goes uh, from his Aadhaar. Aadhaar has seeded his account number. So from there, immediately the payment goes into the bank. So those mid middlemen or the people, uh, four times of Ram Singhs and all that have gone now. So it, is, it has become a very easy system of payment. 
and probably that is the reason why aadhar has picked up especially in the anga anganwadi scheme public distribution system and many other schemes which is there yeah okay okay another statistic style just to market ma our aadhar what is there so we only up to march 2022 aadhar link bank bank accounts in fact though it is not mandatory as per supreme court to link your aadhar to the bank account but the bankers find it much easier to do a deduplication and you know kyc so hence uh, the aadhar linkage exists you would have seen last march was the deadline for the aadhar linking with the pan that's because when the process of sanitizing the income tax database was taking place they found that each one there were many of them who had four to five aadhar uh, pan cards so then they realized okay let's link the pan to the aadhar we will be able to take out all these spurious or uh, faulty pan cards so that again has been completed so now you need to if you have to get a pan card you need to have an aadhar now after first of march but before that it was not required uh, just because of that linkage the income tax department has has probably cornered to around 12 12000 crores of benefit that's what they say uh, we it is not authenticated but yet uh, the, the the people who have come into the tax ambits uh, genuinely have become more now after the linkage of aadhar to the pan okay sir uh, quickly there are a couple of questions coming in regarding yeah. fraud and uh, what if somebody has already so i am already given my aadhar number out uh, okay. multiple times without so uh, there are multiple questions coming i think people are uh, looking forward yeah. to the more yeah, just hold on to those questions i will will cover it 100% we'll cover it thank you 100% if we may overshoot the time but that's at your convenience sure sir definitely no problem okay aadhar enable payment system i was i was telling you bank mitra will come with a pos or a, like a uh, like your uh, uh, what should i say what, the the ones which you used, used to swipe those machines pos which is they are called so he comes you place your finger and you say i want so much money he doesn't have to mention his bank account he has to mention his aadhar if the aadhar is been of course aadhar is linked to his bank account jan dhan yojanas like uh, most of them are also linked so it will pick up the amount and give it to you directly so it become yeah, like so this will be used to deposit money as well sir for example here we've seen a lot of um, labor yeah. community that travels from other states into coimbatore and through uh, uh, our neighboring cities to work in factories and they utilize this service to deposit money instead of paying like you know 25 50 rupees per transaction at a transfer center that's run privately yeah now what uh, i'll tell you what for this sake ipbb that is the india india postal banking system ipp ipb ippb i think uh, okay. in india post banking system that is a it's a corporation under the india post they have now adopted this system so if you find an ippb guy roaming around in coimbatore he is he will have this machine to even deposit money yeah yeah you can okay. but they all uh, bank mitras that are onboarded by the cscs that is the central service uh, agency that we have uh, part of government of india so they are all enabled to do this services so if there is a csc kendra then uh, they also can do this but uh, routine aadhar centers cannot do it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. please please go ahead yeah okay uh dbt as i told you direct benefit transfer to aadhar link banking this is the amount mind you there is a huge amount of savings that the government of india has by virtue of this aadhar in fact when the present government came in they thought this aadhar was a waste of money project but when the power of it was uh, realized by honorable prime minister he said that let's roll this out so the favorite word of the honorable prime minister is jam you would have heard of jam jandhan aadhar and mobility you know jam jam trend jam trinetra if you type on google you will realize you can see the, the honorable prime minister statement uh, mr narendra modi wherever he goes he always at, 
you know preaches on jam that is jam jam trinity as it is called by the pm of god yeah okay uh, adhar payment bridge is an apb as i told you you can transfer money from one account to another if you know the aadhar number of the person who whom you want to transfer so this is also done by india payment bank uh, india post payment bank and also uh, uh, by the post offices they do this ippb transaction so you don't even have to go to your bank so the ippb mitra who comes there or the csc bank mitra who, who comes to your uh, doorstep can also do this aadhar payment bridge kit so we've got a payment bridge yeah okay okay let's come to the most vital aspect of it protecting your aadhar number online i know many of you have shared your aadhar numbers online or provided a copy to many agencies whom one would never know or has already seen so you may choose not to share your aadhar number or your aadhar print out of your aadhar card now again when i say aadhar card i don't mean that physical copy aadhar is valid if you can print it even on a plain paper and provide it to the agencies who demand for it or who want it now in that case what happens is one has to ensure that it is downloaded as a pdf of course it is downloaded as a pdf you have to ensure that that there is a digital signature there if there is an x marks with a yellow yellow sign yellow x mark that means it has not been digitally signed so you just have to open it in pdf and download our certificate this procedure is available on the website so your uh, aadhar will get digitally signed so it is authentic as if it is a printed document provided by uid so you don't have to worry about there is also another m aadhar which i will come to a little later where you can show your aadhar on your mobile also m aadhar m aadhar app yeah okay uh UIDI portal has got large amount of services. I will show you them as as I go next. Okay, next is if you see the locking of just a minute. Yeah, okay. I got one slide about uh, earlier, so it's okay. Yeah, okay. Locking of your Aadhaar. Aadhaar holders can lock the biometric. Now for this, you need to link your mobile number because to log into my portal. you require an otp now if you have not seeded your mobile number with aadhar which is not a biometric part okay is not a mandatory part to be doing i told you there are only four mandatory requirement name address gender and date of birth other than that you can seed your mobile number one can seed your uh, email also if you do that wherever you do an authentication it will give you the details of the transaction and who did the authentication which is that primary core agency who did that authentic authentication will come to your email so this is one way of protecting that you first go and seed your mobile number and email id to the aadhar is a very simple process you have to pay just 50 rupees go to any of the seva kendras and say they have to but you have to go physically because the biometrics of yours is taken and the operator is also taken so who did that update and how you have done the update also matters yeah Yeah, please. A quick yeah. question. Sir. Um, so when you say seeding, um, it's literally my Aadhar number and my mobile phone number are linked. Yeah. Okay. Let me give you another information here. Let's say you have four in your family. Mm -hmm. You can link up to four Aadhar numbers in one mobile. Hmm. Okay. So your wife, you have two kids, you can, and your own. so four of them are allowed to be linked to the same mobile number beyond no. that it will it will get stuck yeah it will so so but today if i want to go and take a phone number they are not issuing one without an aadhar <laughs> right that is, that is beyond me you should ask this <laughs> and you should ask the try try telephone regulatory authority of india oh, okay sir okay <laughs> all right because because that's that's one of the things uh, you know which, which is kind of fascinating when aadhar came out immediately everybody jumped on saying that if you don't have an aadhar we won't give you the service uh -huh. and then when you go to aadhar they say if you don't have a phone number which what do you want me to link it to <laughs> and some kendras didn't know what to do uh, the registration kendras this is a disputable aspect but the reason why they are doing it is 
in the name of one resident the try has noticed 500 sim cards issued to them understood how did they obtain it nobody knows so now they think aadhar is the best way abhi isko bhi le aao on the aadhar campaign got it got it when we told them to do it in when 2010 Mm-hmm. the telephone regulatory did not want to come into the aadhar got it now they realize that 500 sims to one person and they are using it for something called a sim box which mm-hmm. route so they are using these sims for fraud like for example if you go to jamtara which is the cyber crime, cyber crime hub of india what mm-hmm. they call it you will see a person having about 200 to 300 sim cards issued in his own name got it so that is the reason why probably they have changed i am not aware of this but i i yeah. use information to me okay another another uh, question sir here on so when you say lock biometrics mm-hmm. uh, what does that tech, like in layman terms what does lock biometrics mean you told us biometrics is my two iris and my 10 fingerprints yeah yeah okay I'm what does to... lock biometrics mean yeah so first i told you the requirement is to link your aadhar uh, aadhar to the mobile number because an otp will come to do this feature To to enable this feature. Next, you can install M Aadhar on your Android and I, I Apple phone. Do by doing that, we we map the IMEI number, the Aadhar number, and the instance of that uh, app which you have installed gets linked to my database. Now that mobile which you have installed M Aadhar app, which is available on Google's Play Store and Apple Play Store, Apple uh, Store. is enabled to, to do this locking again if you have not registered your mobile number you will not be able to install this app and activate this feature i told you again the mandatory requirement is to get this mobile number seeded to the aadhar now there let's say there was a okay let me give you an instance of use case here in haryana when you do registration of do, uh, or of uh, property you have to give your aadhar number and you have to give your fingerprint from that blue color stamp you know you have to give a fingerprint so what the fraudsters did because they know the aadhar number and they know your uh, they have seen the pattern of your finger they made a gummy finger you know that's possible fevi call se banao ya apna jo the one they use uh, on the finger that is the to, uh, nail polish usse bhi ban jata hai you can make a fingerprint a fake fingerprint and then they were using this to do aps enable transaction aadhar enable payment transaction now then we realized okay let's give a provision to lock so let's say if nobody you want to protect your biometric and nobody should use a fake your fake biometric to do an aadhar enable transaction you can use this feature to lock your biometric i hope i am answer now yes, how sir. to do it you go to the mrr app it is all self explanatory you go to our website you will see lot of these uh, uh, widgets there you can just download a few of them see the video very very simple you can and you can unlock it let's say you're going to the bank sbi has called you for their ekyc just unlock it for that particular instant it will unlock for permanently or it will unlock for 10 minutes and then you can do your kyc there in front of the bank manager and then just come back and lock the biometric or automatically if you have chosen the 10 minute unlocking then it will lock after 10 minutes you have to really use this feature to understand what i'm trying to tell but uh, yeah many people are not aware okay uh, if you want after you have locked your biometric you can still use a virtual id for authentication for your ekyc but many banks don't expect we accept vids because they want to store your aadhar number so uh, you can use the locking facility of the biometric locking okay using the m aadhar app or the uidi portal you can lock your aadhar itself so that nobody can use your number only here people can use kyc uh, demographic kyc aadhar numbers if you just lock the biometric but if you lock the aadhar itself then nobody can get access to even your aadhar demographic data so Just sir if I, if i yeah. want to stop people from like uh, using my aadhar information to apply for sim cards 
if i want people to not be able to apply for a loan or any banking services or link my aadhar to some account or try to gain access to my account through aadhar mm -hmm. to some new bank or something right then would i simply go and lock my biometrics or would i have to lock my aadhar itself ideally i would suggest to lock your biometrics okay so because that way no new service can be taken without my knowledge yeah it will not okay. happen only because you have locked your biometric the aadhar database does not provide or does not know your biometrics at all got it you just forget it for that particular now on, on the flip side i have another question here sir which says which which if you can cover later that will be good what if i have lost control of my phone number which i had access to lock or unlock my biometrics then what do i do so that's another follow up question that we have yeah. you have to go to a biometric uh, you have to go to an aadhar seva kendra or an aadhar authorized agency provide your biometric again and change your mobile number you can refresh your mobile number got it okay. but for that you have to physically go because i want to know whether mr x only is coming to change his own mobile number yeah so you have to go yourself take the uh, you don't have to carry your new mobile num mobile uh, phone just go there and tell now my number has changed to so and so please change it in the database so he'll ask you to authenticate first once that is done your number will be changed yeah now mind you here if you lock your biometrics uh, if you lock your aadhar in totality you need to generate a virtual id and keep it with you because next time when you unlock your aadhar in total totality you have to provide that same virtual id which you did to lock this is another security feature this has come by the orders of the supreme court so we have to abide by this so remember don't lose your virtual id now in case you have lost your virtual id when you are locking your aadhar you can call 1947 and then retrieve your virtual id got yeah. it okay can i go ahead yes please okay. now verify now aadhar has in the in your portal if you log in let's say there is a maid who has come to your house you have collected that maid's aadhar number before the police verification is to happen you want to verify so you can punch in the aadhar number you can verify anybody if you have got a portal access by virtue of your mobile your mobile and your aadhar so this is one feature is there so you can you can virtually see it or you can ask for the physical copy of the aadhar and there is a qr code that is there just use your m aadhar app to scan that qr code it will flash the complete detail on to you you can see the lady's photograph you can see the lady's address that is supplied and then you can tally with that print out whether this is the same person or not now this is another very good feature it is used in my colony also when maids are to be onboarded and offboarded within our colony or for that matter when uh, the they use it for any of the service delivery guys who come into our colony they use that qr code scanner to see if this now this is a encrypted uh, secure qr code so no one can write a qr code of this nature and the reading cannot happen using any other reader except the m aadhar reader now uh another small information here the google play store also has an offline qr code scan reader so that offline you don't have to have register a mobile number you can install that will allow only to read read qr code there is no more feature in that so this also you can avail but if you've got an m aadhar app you can read or you can see many of the features also you can verify their mobile number and email if that person is standing in front of you. अच्छा आपने आधार में कौन सा मोबाइल नंबर किया यू टाइप इन दैट इट विल शो यू द करेक्ट मोबाइल नंबर आल्सो इन दैट एम आधार व्हेन यू स्कैन द क्यूआर कोड या ओके नाउ दिस इज हाउ आवर पोर्टल लुक्स लाइक इफ यू सी ऑन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड बिलो द अशोका यू विल सी माय आधार दिस इज द पोर्टल वेयर यू कैन सी दिस नंबर ऑफ सर्विसेज अगेन मोस्ट ऑफ दीस सर्विसेज यू रिक्वायर टू हैव योर मोबाइल नंबर सीडेड if it is not there some of the features do work like verify aadhar number if you see here on the aadhar services that the third column you will see verify verify aadhar number this you can use without even having your mobile number registered you can use this feature 
and the other features are listed below you can also check where all your bank has seeded your aadhar all these features are also will some of them may not be working because we are undergoing a migration to the uh, from a physical data center to a cloud ecosystem so it's a matter of time when all the migration is done of uidi you will be able to avail all these features yeah okay this is what i was telling that if you have your mobile number linked it is good and best so try and link your aadhar number mobile numbers to it locking as i told you let's say you want to give it in a hotel he is still insisting so you want to give a print out or he takes a photocopy of your aadhar to ask him to provide it back to you and just scratch the first eight numbers and then give it then it is secure the last four digits is okay there is no worry on that but ensure that you can he can uh, read it after you have scratched it or use a permanent marker ink to obscure that that first eight digit yeah okay right how to generate a virtual id now you typically don't have to have an internet but if you have a registered mobile number over the sms also you can generate a virtual id our 1947 is also the sms number so our sms service is also right from there these are the these are the types there is a captcha also that run so mind you if you have not installed the right version you may not be able to see the captcha so try it from a different device or a different computer you will be able to see the captcha so we have a question on biometrics uh -huh. this is from uh, mr jay kumar uh -huh. if i lock my biometrics for aadhar can i use it for attendance at office no 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 for that that's why they have given this feature like when i go for, to my office at delhi mm -hmm. or 10 minutes away i open my m aadhar app using my pin and then i unlock the biometric for 10 minutes mm. so by the time i reach the uh, the office attendance booth so uh, i'm i'm in time just in time that i give my attendance and then automatically it gets locked after 10 minutes so if you have locked it it so happened like in the present uh, in in one of the national examination i think it was the clat or the neat exam a child forgot that it had locked its biometric so in one of the examination centers when the child reached the child couldn't give her uh examination because it didn't remember that it had locked its aadhar so be very careful when you do such a thing let's say you're going for an examination center your child is going for an entrance exam because it is aadhar linked uh, the funniest part is i have seen in up that some of their examination they use aadhar so even if you're going to the toilet for 5 minutes he he does a you he does a authentication <laughs> using the aadhar so that's a very innovative way of using aadhar he comes back from the toilet he sees okay again authentic ah yes uh, the same dinesh went out he's after this recess he's come back hmm. so uh, okay coming back to the point uh, if you have locked your biometric then you cannot give any attendance also yeah okay right the otp is as good or as secure or requires the same amount of importance as that of your bank otp so be very careful because aadhar is now one of the riding factors of payment bridges across india so be very careful that the otp is a very essential part now uh, one more information which i would like to give you which you have to go aadhar enabled payment system is default on by the bank account holder i am repeating by the bank account holder aadhar has nothing to do with now if you find that there is a fraudulent withdrawal of say 5000 rupees so we have put a limit that only 5000 can be done and 10000 in a day but yet you know money is money so if it has happened you go back to your bank and tell them ki sir my aps is on by default please switch it off i will on it when i want to 
because there are large number of frauds. You know, services provided for convenience is sometimes taken for right. You know, and then the hacker or the perpetrator is waiting for such avenues, and there have been large amount of money lost due to Aadhaar enabled payment system. Because it was a convenience and it was a flagship project to prove India is digitized in many ways, but yet fraudsters are. So it is a rat and a mouse race, uh, rat and a uh, cat and a mouse race primarily. That uh, he is running ahead, hacker runs ahead, we run ahead. Again, he is ahead. So most of the time, the hacker is ahead of us. Okay. So and the M Aadhaar has got something called a T O T P. Let's say you have reached a place where there is no internet. And the OTP is not coming, so you can. TOTP is nothing but an automated running clock, so it is synchronized with your time time of your mobile. There is a, a, a six digit number that gets flashes every ten seconds, so you can use that as your OTP as well. You would see in our option there is a TOTP option also. In many, like many of you are in government services, may be using e-office, the NIC application. So those have a facility of token-based authentication OTP, Aadhaar-based OTP authentication, also TOTP. So if there's no internet, this TOTP is a clock that is running within the M Aadhaar app. So you can use that also. I hope I'm I'm able to explain to you what is TOTP. It is nothing but a sequential. Clock that is running every ten seconds, this six digit gets changed. So that instance, that time, this six digit on your mobile number, this is being flashed, is is also the correct number in my database for that particular resident. So, so if, if if I were to, I have my uh, M Aadhaar app open. Where where would I find T O T P? Okay. Just a minute. I'll also have to open it concurrently. Then, just a minute. Yeah. You open the M Aadhaar app. Go to My Aadhaar. Mm -hmm. You have to type in your PIN. Okay. Uh, now, immediately the first tab which you see is Get TOTP. Okay. Got it. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry. All these in terms of tutorials is available on the website. You can go and see them. YouTube may be बहुत कुछ है. You can always. Yeah. Okay. So down deleting Aadhaar files from the download. Remember, if you are gone to a place to download your Aadhaar, though when the Aadhaar comes in, it is protected by a password. Yet that password is crackable because it is just a uh i think it is a eight digit password but it is crackable but you can guess because i think first four digit is your first four characters is your name first name and the next four is your date of birth or something that's the password that it gives when you download so ensure that you delete wherever you have downloaded your aadhaar either in it could be in a shop or to a geo geo service provider Okay, biometric lock. This is the two different ways of locking. You can just go through the view file. You'll be able to. I'll probably mail this PPT to you after removing all the credentials of Aadhaar. Maybe you can circulate it around. Sure, sir. So. You can go to the portal also. You can use the M Aadhaar also. So it looks like the most convenient way of managing Aadhaar is through the M Aadhaar app. Yeah, for that you need to register your mobile number because if your register if your mobile number is not registered, this app will never get installed. Okay. Because there's a handshake between the IMEI, the Aadhaar number, the mobile number, and the token which we have created of the M Aadhaar for you at the database. Understood, sir. Yeah. Okay. Here I would like to give you one more information. 
there is something called an offline authentication. If you go to our website, you will see you can download an XML file, a dot XML file, which is nothing but a, uh, a, a text, a text file, a, a notepad file, which is again, you can use that to protect your with a password. And you can carry that on a pen drive to the bank. So the bank can take your XML, you share that password, and they can use that as your authentication also. If I, if you can see here, I think I, there is a link. Mm. Mm. Are you able to see the portal? Yes, sir. We can see your portal page. Yeah. Download offline. Yeah, yeah. And you see on the third column, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth link. Which has Aadhaar paperless, paperless offline. offline. Yeah. So it is basically downloading an XML file. When you download the XML file, it will ask you for a password to lock that XML. And then you can carry that XML on a uh, pen drive. Once you can take it to your bank and say, this is my authentication. Got it. So we have a question from Mr. Anil. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to know what all places my Aadhaar number is currently in use or has been used? Okay. Reserve this question. Just note this down. I'll take it yeah, to the last. Sure. It's a very good question, actually. A part of it I will be answering in part of my PPT. So, yeah. Yeah. I think we came up till here. Now, there are, I told you there is online authentication. There are two types EKYC and a demographic authentication. So it is primarily this view file will tell you how that authentication is done. Or you can supply your other number or a virtual ID at that particular time. But remember, if you have generated a virtual ID and you have not destroyed it, so that is valid like an other number. Okay. So as I told you, my database only gives a yes or a no. So we just started the face authentication. If you remember, the Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister, just launched this to facilitate uh, the life certificate that is given for a pensioner to a bank. Now, the old age, uh, the senior citizens do not have to go to the bank. They can primarily install a, 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 an Android app, which is called the Jeevan Praman app, and you can pass your face authentication and that becomes a life certificate for pensioners now. So this is onboarded. So Aadhaar has given a headless application, a face RD app, registered device. So that has to be installed alongside the pension authorities application, Jeevan Praman application. Once one has done that, you can use the OTP and Aadhaar face authentication for senior citizens to provide that life certificate back to the bank in the case. You know, they have to go once in a year to show that they are still alive, you know. So that has been avoided. Now you can sit at home on your bed and do it. Yeah, this is what I was telling. This is the Honorable Prime Minister launched this. Of course, it did mature only this year in March. So it's a wonderful service. Many of them have started subscribing to it as the Pension and Pension Welfare Authority, the National Health Authority. Then there is the Government of Karnataka agency called Fruits. They provide subsidized uh, benefits like uh, you know, fertilizers and seeds and all that. So they also have the facility of doing the face authentication from your own mobile. Mm. But you have to first do the registration part, which is a little cumbersome. So it's got a large number of security features. So what? But it's a nice feature for the senior citizens who are bedridden, who can't move around. So even if your bank insists, you can ask one of the bank members to come and help you in installing this app. And once that is done, because while installing, you need to have a mobile number. And also, the, the live person should be live in front of the camera. So you can use that also. Okay. Yeah. Answer to one part of the question which you asked me. If you have got your mobile number seeded, you can log into the Aadhaar portal. 
you can see the last 50 transactions that one has done in authentication. Now, let me put you into perspective. Aadhaar is purpose agnostic. I do not know where all you have taken or using my authentication. I only know that you come to say that you are Mr. Ram or not. That's all. Or you are Mr. Binoj Koshi or not. Or you are Mrs. Lakshmi or not. After that, I have no visibility on who has used the authentication. So, the, the Aadhaar authentication history gives you a particular transaction ID. Now, that transaction ID tells you who has come to do the authentication. Of course, if you have leaked your email, you will get an alert on your email when an authentication is used. Now, based on that code, if you come call back 1947, it will tell you who is that agency. But otherwise, we do not disclose who has come. We are not supposed to store who has authenticated. Primarily because of the fact that privacy. Uh, Supreme, Honorable Supreme Court has clearly said that data have to be maintained in silos. The silos cannot be merged. So if a person, okay, let me give it in a more use case scenario. Okay. okay, let's say a man who committed murder in Coimbatore now travels to Bangalore. On the way, he withdraws money using the Aadhaar enabled payment system from his Bank of Baroda branch. Now, UIDI does not know where, what, how he has done the authentication. But we know he has come to ask, seek a yes or a no from my database. Now, that makes Aadhaar binding. That if the crime investigation is done on that person, I have no powers or I don't have the data to share whether he has withdrawn money in, on the way in Palakkad or on the way from Coimbatore to, uh, say, in Salem or I mean, I'm just trying to make a scenario. So, it is one way it is protecting those innocents who may get victims of, you know, a withdrawal or, or a technological error that may happen. So, I'm happy with that restrictions on us. Aadhaar is happy. I don't want to know who has done the authentication, but I've done an authentication. And I will give you the history of that record for 50 years. And in the past six months, 50 transactions in the past six months or the six months transaction. This data I have. But if you ask me who, who withdrew my ration using my myometric, my finger, gummy finger or my ungli kaat ke leke gaya, I will not be able to tell you. Understood, sir. So this, this also, you know, uh, something that I've observed uh, in, in my own personal life, mm -hmm. people very easily give away their Aadhaar number. Mm -hmm. Marathon registration, Aadhaar number is an option. Let's give it off. Yeah. School has asked for it. Let's just give off our child's Aadhaar number, regardless of the fact that the school has no procedures on how to manage this data. Yeah. The papers yeah. are just lying around in their office. Anybody can walk in as a parent. Okay. Walk away with the paper and they wouldn't even realize. Okay. Now, let me, let me give you the answer here. Aadhaar does not mandate anybody to collect the individual's Aadhaar or the biometric. Only two entities, under Section 7 and under Section 4, unless he takes a Government of India notification, he is not authorized to collect your Aadhaar, number one. Now, for example, a marathon. Let us say you are running a marathon. Nobody comes in between. So they want to deduplicate, so they are using the Aadhaar number. Because they know that if I ask for a driving license, you will have a similar driving license. Or it can be photoshopped and you can make a driving license of, let's say, some other place. But the beauty of the Aadhaar is that if you punch in my Aadhaar number into my portal, I will know who you are. So mm -hmm. that is the reason why these marathon guys or the school guys find it more facilitated to collect. Now, I'm very, I'm, I'm very optimistic in telling you that we cannot stop this practice. So okay. the only way to do it is to educate the Aadhaar holder rather than going and taking a danda and policing around to find to you to uh, to ensure discipline of Aadhaar. So and I, neither do I have that capability to do it, and neither is UIDI going to take it in the next few steps. But it is the Aadhaar user 
who is supposed to ensure the protection of his own aadhar no next part of the question is what about those lying database in the dark web they say that over 40 50 lakh aadhar numbers with all demographic data is lying what is the worry if you type on google who mr naidu is i can get a or who shiba is i can get a huge amount of data about naidu or shiba but then what will i do by taking that data my worry is my biometric so that you idea is assured that your biometric is secure i hope i have answered it i am a bit candid on what i am telling because i mai aadhar ka namak khata hu understood yes yes i think i think uh, uh, anil if you have a follow up question please do type it in your questions uh, q and a section and then i'll post it to sir here but i think we we understood you know last 50 transactions up to 50 transactions or the transactions that happened in the last 6 months if it's less than 50 authentications you'll be able to tell that it something was authenticated but and you'll get an identity for that authentication but you know uh, you can't know the material purpose for which it was done yeah yeah okay right now let me look at give you a little bit of information of the aadhar there are few restrictions that have been placed because of the very fact that aadhar has become a very important identity as i told you it is not a mark of citizenship it is only a part of residence because a resident a foreigner who comes to india a korean from samsung gets employed at coimbatore let's say he has to file his income tax to bichara usko to aadhar dena zaruri hai so if he proves a 182 days days we provide him an aadhar now his aadhar is under use after 10 years we generally put a suspension on these type of aadhar foreigners but otherwise for a resident of india we don't put a citizen of india we don't put a restriction of course that is that is still in the pipeline and it is it is happening that's why we have given that after 10 years if you have not touched your aadhar you have to go and touch go and touch it at least once or to do some update or change something okay or, or refresh your documents that you had supplied while enrolling okay now a date of birth can be changed in aadhar once the time when you supplied and one more time after that you cannot change yet there is a provision to change there is an exception handling procedure the details are available on the website one has to provide a birth certificate to do it so you have to get a legitimate birth certificate which is verified back at the uidi and then the change can take place now name there is an exception for ladies especially post marriage because our culture in india is such but you can change your name twice so once you have given your name second time you can change another time you can change but when you come back after two 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 changes you will not be able to change you need a gazette to be published and you need relevant documents for the change and you have to provide a reason for the change also through the gazette notification now gender earlier you could change a numpty number of time the change is only possible from say male female to transgender because the earlier data by those who had enrolled in the first one or two years there was no option uh, but now there is a transgender option you can change your gender once after that you have to approach the regional office and and, and, and undergo a procedure to take the uh, changes rest there is no restriction on the number of times you want to change your address in fact address is very easy if you have a standard certificate with a photograph signed by a gazetted officer you can change your uh, address as many number of times as you want to photograph also you can change right go and refresh your photograph but again while changing the photograph you have to give your biometrics so of course we have to reach the center for it yeah but you have to provide your biometric okay right i'm almost at the last end of it this is a feature which aadhar started uh, a facility wherein uh, it is a typical like an atm card it's a very robust it's not a pvc card exactly it's a pedg card so the life is it's got extended life the rate is only 50 rupees so you don't 
you don't have to have a mobile number to actually get this ordered you can ask anybody to order for you also but it will reach by speed post to the address provided in the aadhaar database so mind you before you ask your friend to make a pvc card order for you or aadhaar card order for you uh, you will have to ensure that the address is updated because it will come by a speed registered speed post so it will be only delivered to you now the facilities in this card is this typically like any other card it is not that you have to possess this card there are few there's a hologram there's a gilochi pattern which is there and there's a red line if you see just above mera aadhar mera pehchan that's got uid or uid inscribed inscribed and on the right hand side top corner you would see a ghost image so all your data is used to print that black and white image like in a passport you would see so this is the feature of it in fact the qr code is much much prominent here so if you reverse the card you will see a qr code that is scannable uh, in fact this came up uh, after the ajmal kasab incident when the coast ka, coastal regions were to be secure so the fishermen who were going on high sea were provided this uh, pvc card free by the mha ministry of home affairs so when the fisherman goes to the high sea he scans this qr code and so it is quite weather proof saline water mm -hmm. nothing happens to this card so you scan the qr code and they let go this guy who goes into the high sea comes back the next day so when he comes back again they scan the qr code they know that this is the right person who has come on that so so now this has been extended to the public it's quite cheap so all of you should get it 50 rupees is not a big amount uh, for the quality of the card that is offered uh, sir i have a few more questions that have come in yeah one is a follow up from anil um he asked the question about you know uh, how can i see the history of all my authentications his follow up question to that is will i ever come to know and i'm assuming his question is more live will i come to know live that an aadhar authentication is being done right now and i can i stop or restrict it i'm assuming that authentication is otp based right sir no both uh, otp biometric both okay so if it's biometric then otp won't come uh, if, if you now when you do a biometric otp will not come but you will immediately get an email alert that an uh, that an uh, authentication has happened immediately okay. so in this case anil the suggestion is to make sure that your email and phone number are uh, linked to your aadhar then yeah got it uh, i'm moving on to the next question sir yeah um for a government agency like a post office or an rto your transport office will they accept a vid and why are they still insisting on a, on the aadhar number do they not have an interface to verify the aadhar through the vid uh see uh, this is a matter of education i know before i were to open this presentation many of you would not know that there was a vid concept process which is there right. so by virtue of these government servants working in these enterprises these uh, offices uh most of them are not aware of the vid but you can tell him that bhai aap authentication kar rahe ho mera vid use karo got it right but even if it, he doesn't want to and if it is only a biometric based authentication and he is asking a copy of the aadhar just provide him a copy just scratch off the first four eight digits of it basically give them a masked aadhar yeah yeah okay uh i'll come to uh, the third question here mm -hmm. a few days ago i saw that masked aadhar is safe what type of verifications can this be used for okay because a masked aadhar will not have the first eight digits then what kind of verification can it be used for okay right now one is the qr code which is available on that particular thing okay next the masked aadhar always carries a vid printed down below okay if you download a masked aadhar the vid is automatically printed down below so that vid can be used for uh, his or her authentication for that particular instant i hope i have answered the question next for example demographic detail 
let's say i want to verify the person who has come to the counter he is provided with a mask aadhar i want to verify the name bhaiya ek aur id aur de do let me see your id he can do that or he can say okay uh, uh, just show me your physical aadhar i will not note down your number i will keep this as a document for 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 record purposes got it so there is nothing wrong in sharing the aadhar number and so far as unless he's got a photo memory that he Uh, that he memorizes your aadhar number then that, then there is no go no i i think that answered uh, that part of the question so thank you yeah i have finished any more questions i have stopped the sharing Uh, any more questions you can ask me so there is a there is a generic question uh, regarding like you know uh, this is something that uh, i have personally taken up with the cbse board as well as department of education tamil nadu government mm -hmm. uh, why they are mandating providing aadhar numbers to register a child okay yeah right and both the agencies on twitter they have come back and said uh, we have not required any of the schools to collect this data okay and yet most schools insist on it and most parents are giving away the data very easily okay i'll tell you this part cbsc has now become a section 7 entity in which they are they are going to upload the mark sheet on the dg locker now the primary aspect of dg locker is the uniqueness of the aadhar number so if you don't have an aadhar you can't register on dg lock so the very fact that cbsc does not want to you know do physical copy management they are probably thinking of capturing the aadhar number and uploading the mark sheet after the 10 on the dg locker so this is an exercise which cbsc is doing uh but yes i agree that the security of that aadhar number need to be ensured by the school and all the chain down up to the cbsc headquarters got it in so far as the state capturing aadhar number is concerned you can mail to us we will go back to the state and tell them that you cannot collect unless they take a notification of section 7 and section section 7 now the advantage of this is accountability once the notification is issued by the government of india and they capture tomorrow that the dpdp bill is in place or the dpdp data privacy bill in place i can hold them accountable and i can claim money for privacy breach from these people who will misuse the aadhar number yeah so uh, i don't see any other questions coming in there was just a comment to a question from the previous one previous question that we answered just thanking us for the answer uh -huh. sir thank you very much for this session uh, there is one question i uh, shiba ma'am will this video be uploaded to youtube or uh, any other medium yes sir we... will be uploaded in the isec uh, portal of youtube okay it will be available i had Yo already answered that question okay got it so yogita just had a question about you know how to get the phone number updated i think uh, this would have to be done at a seva kendra right yeah you have to go to a seva kendra you have to physically visit and it cannot be done online also online you can only update your address there is no other feature earlier we could do many of them but uh, because of the frauds that are happening and the impersonations so we decided to block the online aspects and in a country like india you know how it is difficult to enforce Uh, yes so till till people's awareness to how these things need to be managed improves yeah. uh, i think putting in these safeguards does make sense yeah uh, so there is one another follow up question from anil again uh -huh. what type of typical frauds are the can you educate us about that are happening with the aadhar number being available in the public domain okay first and foremost is this aadhar enable payment system in fact uh, uh, the prime minister's office itself has issued a notification to many of these sub registrar offices across the country because they found that they were using the aadhar 
and they were mentioning aadhar and there to of course you give a thumb impression ltm or a full finger full all finger thumb impressions on your registration papers so the service providers you know are outsiders they are not uh, the government and the people who sit in these sub registrar offices registering property so a large number of these biometric alongside the aadhar number have been leaked into the market many states now have stopped the specific notifications from the prime minister's office has gone to the chief secretaries of the states now to stop this practice of capturing biometrics and aadhar side by side so again the best way to do it is if you are still using it in a state just put xxx in the first eight digit and put your last digit and then put your thumb there but again uh, i don't know this is only a work around what i can ad- advise I, i'll not give this as a uh, aadhar official statement uh, any state that is still capturing aadhar number with your biometric that is your thumb impression that red wire, blue color stamp stamp pad se jo nikal ke hath se karte hain so you can report to us immediately we will write to that state that this practice has to be avoided so that is the first form of fraud so sir just Second. to recap that just to recap that because there were a lot of things that you mentioned there so if i go to the registrar office and they tell me to authenticate my thumb impression against a digital device like a thumbprint reading device right then that is fine yeah. but if they tell me to put my finger on an ink pad and put it on a piece of paper that is not okay okay here again i'll give you a small tip see our uh, our fingers have got that oil called sebum so when mm-hmm. you put your thumb and then take it out it leaves an impression there so when you pull your out thumb from that reader device just swipe and pull it you know mm-hmm. as if you're wiping that off so got be it. very careful that is one secondly is that ensure that that device is actually being used for that particular like you go to an atm you would see where you put your there are uh, what do they call fingerprint it? enabled services yes no 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 i'm talking about those atm you know they have got uh, spoof spoofing the yes. data uh, card mm-hmm. readers placed in the where you insert your atm so there might be a machine attached which is not meant to be doing an authentication they are capturing your finger so be very careful there okay you know it's all a matter of awareness number one secondly when when you are doing your biometric authentication ensure that the individual says take off your finger if he asks you to keep it for a longer duration of time then you have to have a eye of suspicion on that understood what was the other but generally part? other than other than where a biometric is needed let's say if somebody just has my aadhar number Uh-huh. what kind of frauds can we what kind of fraud should we be watchful for okay now uh, another part is be very careful on alerts that come on your mobile let's say uh, uh, a person wants a person goes to a bank and says that no this is my mobile number please add my mobile number the bank will automatically add another person's mobile number to a, to a different account it will add but then when you go for your kyc ensure that the mobile number seated in your bank account is the one is is the one that you desire it should not happen that your mobile number is linked to a different person's mobile number and he does a, a e kyc in lieu of you which will not happen ideally but if he is using a gummy finger then that also can be fake so whenever you go to a bank or any your agency where you're linking your phone number make sure it is the number you want yeah 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 yeah. Okay. yeah yeah all right thank you very much sir uh so we've run like 40 minutes over uh, <laughs> yet we have a good strong participation we started at 70 plus and we still have 41 uh, over here uh-huh. i'd like to thank everybody who stayed around so long asking your questions very good questions in fact uh thank you binod sir for all the information that you've shared with us today uh, we truly appreciate what you do for this community on in the cyber security space as well as what you do in your uh, capacity at uh, uid ai in uh, creating this digital infrastructure for the country uh, looking forward to more interactions with you in the future as well as with iisac as uh, as a president of sindhi forum i'd like to thank 
uh, group captain Naidu sir, Sheba ma'am, Lakshmi ma'am who conducted our first session and Vinod sir for you for conducting this session for us. Uh, I hope all our community members and friends who have joined from uh, around Coimbatore and other places gained a lot of knowledge on how to protect your Aadhaar and how to safeguard yourself in this digital world. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it was a pleasure addressing all of you, I mean, talking to all of you. And remember, there's a huge amount of backing that happens at Aadhaar. There's a huge workforce that ensures. And rest assured, you are safe uh, with us. Thank you very much, sir. Have a good day, everybody. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Colonel Koshi. And uh, thank you, the Sindhi Forum Coimbatore, for giving Isaac the opportunity to conduct such a webinar. And looking forward to have more collaborations with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sandeep. Thank you very much, ma'am. Have a good day, folks. Yeah, you may log out. Yes. Shiba, ma'am, please send me the link of the YouTube video once it's available. I'll share it within all the groups that we sure, send. Sure. Thank I'll, you. It will take little time. Sure. Absolutely. Understood. Because it has to be first downloaded and then again uploaded. So, and our technical team is straight away, right away, very busy with the India Mobile Congress happening at Pragati Vedan. Oh, wow. <laughs> <That's> nice. <laughs> so we have a small exhibition there. You know, just miniature lab is also put up. So they're all busy there. Very good. Very so good. Maybe in a week wow. time, I'll get it done. Sure. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.